Hello, my name is Mariam zarnagar Dolov, and I'm the director of the Humanitarian Action Initiative at the George Washington University. I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Carlasco, military advisor, PAX New York, and an alum of the Elliott School for our Humanitarian Careers Inside series. In these flash interviews, practitioners in the humanitarian field tell us about their career paths, challenges, and successes. Let's get started. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Excellent. Tell me a little bit about your current position, Mark. What are your um, main activities day to day? So I've been a war crimes investigator now for going on 20 years. Uh, so the thing I really like about it is there is no average day and things are very fluid and change quite often. You know, if, if you don't like what you're doing today, it's going to be different tomorrow. Uh, so for me, there's really three phases to the work that I do. Uh, one phase is the planning. So, you know, you're in the office, uh, whether that's in the UN or an NGO that I'm working for, and you're planning uh, whatever investigation that you're going to go and do, you know, where you have to go, who you're going to speak to, uh, what kind of uh, forensic evidence you're going to be looking for, and you're working on that. The second phase is the actual investigation, and that's going to the country, unless you already live there, which I have while working for the UN at times. And so then you are going to actually go to the site. You're going to conduct an investigation, do um, conduct uh, interviews with victims and witnesses, um, try to pull out, you know, uh, forensic evidence. Uh, part of the thing that I do is I, I, uh, I'm adept at identifying weapons and weapon effects. And so I'll try to use that to identify who the perpetrator is. And so you're going through the investigative process. And then once that's done, then you go back to headquarters and that's when you do your report writing. And, you know, perhaps what's the most important part, the advocacy, because that's where you're trying to get uh, change. You're trying to get, whether it's states or non-state actors to change their, their practices. Uh, and so that's generically what I do in the field. Uh, right now, because of COVID, very much I'm working on doing trainings uh, for NATO, the US military, uh, and other uh, Western militaries. We conduct trainings with them on how to better protect civilians. And I've also been working uh, very closely the last few weeks now with the Pentagon as they are trying to improve some of their civilian harm policies. So it really depends on uh, what the, what's needed for the day. Uh, but I really have to say the thing I like most about it is just the, the, the variety of work that there is. Great. Thank you so much. And could you tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today? So I already mentioned that you went through the Elliott School, but also maybe make the connection between the military end uh, of, of humanitarian intervention with what we most people would imagine humanitarian action really uh, is in terms of helping human suffering. Sure. Well, I would say I've had a fairly non-traditional career path. Uh, after I graduated with my master's degree from the Elliott School, uh, you know, I was looking for a job, as many students do, and trying to find one. And uh, I know it's a little bit cliche, but it was my network uh, that got me placed. Uh, there was a, a, a fellow that was a year ahead of me at Elliott School, and he was working in the Pentagon at Defense Intelligence Agency. And he told me that they were hiring. So I went in and I got a job there. Uh, uh, you know, four years later, I found myself sitting in front of the director of central intelligence, uh, the secretary of defense, the vice president, and giving briefings. And so I was really quite shocked at how quickly uh, you can get into things that are really, really meaty. From that side, I was working mostly targeting. And part of the targeting work is to ensure that you are protecting civilians, that you're not unnecessarily uh, killing civilians. But it was the Iraq War uh, 2003, and I had issues with it. And so I transitioned to Human Rights Watch. And for me, that was a really great fit because then I could take the knowledge, skills, and abilities that I had from my Pentagon position as an intelligence officer and transition that into the humanitarian world where I was then investigating things that militaries were doing. So using the skill set that I had developed over the years in the military, uh, in, in military support, and then bringing that to the humanitarian human rights side. I did that for uh, Human Rights Watch. I then went into the UN and I've done war crimes investigations for the UN in numerous places such as 
uh, Libya, Syria, and Afghanistan. And the just been been really interested in moving different place to place. And from there, then I went back to the military and went and worked for the, the US Navy uh, and deployed on ships and did assessments on, on American aircraft carrier of civilian harm issues for the military, you know, how their targeting was or was not working. And then I went back into the, the human rights field uh, and now I'm at PAX and we're conducting a lot of these trainings for militaries as they're uh, looking to improve how they deal with civilians uh, in the field. Great, that's fascinating. It really shows the fluidity among these these sectors and how the the humanitarian and the military are so interrelated as well. Um, finally, what advice would you share with young professionals who might want to enter this field? Well, I think really you need to be flexible. Uh, it's important to know that if you go into something like myself going into the Pentagon and maybe you feel like you're not in the exact spot that you want to be, uh, that there are options and opportunities to move and to take the skills that you have and have learned both through your education and through application in your work and move that into a different area. And so I've been able to move between both the military sphere and the humanitarian sphere by taking those skills that I've I've amassed and, you know, and, and applying them to both. So I think flexibility is one of the most important things. And then, of course, you know, it's just making sure that you have a solid um, network, uh, constantly uh, working with them and being just open to change and opportunities. I think for me, I've seen times when uh, a job has come up and I think, oh, that looks really interesting. And, and is that right for where I am at right now in my life? And sometimes the answer is no, but sometimes it's yes. And I think you really need to understand we're, we're not in the place that like my parents were, where they worked somewhere for 30 years. You know, I've been in and out of a variety of organizations and I'm doing some really interesting work and it's been very rewarding. So I think that flexibility and openness to change has really helped me. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing your insights with us and joining us for the Humanitarian Career Insights Series.